What's up YouTube, it's Bustin here coming at you with another deck profile and this time we're looking at Gundam War. Uh, only three sets were uh, released in English, uh, it was around 2005-2006 by Bandai. The game had a massive following in Japan. Um, this game is actually, uh, the mechanics in the game are quite similar to what Dragon Ball CCG plays like. Uh, so let's jump into my uh, Earth Federation deck profile and let's have a look at it. Right, so starting with the uh, one drops, we are running three GM. This card is fantastic. I love the look of this card. I love that it's just a straight up 202, uh, giving you sort of like an early ability to start to get in chip damage. And it can be a fairly good sort of team leader as well. Can go both to Earth and Space, uh, giving us uh, some advantage through that. Probably as much as I like GM, I uh, I love Medea Transport Ship even more. It's just such a multifunctional card. Doesn't even cost you uh, anything. It comes down for free. Turn one as long as you got that blue generator in play. Can only go to Earth. Not really a problem. He's a battleship, so you can actually drop the GM and also the Medea after that. Uh, and he has the supply one ability, which means that in case you swing with both GM and Medea. Uh, Medea can supply your GMs during your opponents turn. Your GM is still going to be able to, uh, still going to be active. Um, on top of that, uh, you can roll this guy to reroll any one of your unit cards in the same area as this card. So it's very, very beneficial to get Medea transport shit down early game uh, because once you start to get into your higher cards, obviously uh, they will come down tapped. You can untap them immediately with the transport ship. You can also pop this guy to uh, draw a card. So, you know, once you don't find any functionality for him, pop him, get an extra card. That might just be the card that you need for that turn. So these are our turn one drops. Uh, we're skipping turn two and we're moving straight into turn three. And this is our uh, draw engine in the deck, uh, Kairos is Jigen. Uh, it's a 2-1-3, which is... Uh, nothing to be scoffed about. You do have to run this card in pretty much a mono blue deck. Uh, this is a mono blue deck, of course. Costs you one, uh, one, one cost to play this card. But uh, every time when this character, uh, when this card has a character on it uh, and is in battle, you draw a card in the resolution. So basically, you can draw a card off this card every time. Fantastic. We'll get to the uh, characters a little bit later in the game, uh, in, in the deck profile even. <laughs> uh, so three Jigun, that's our draw engine, and we also have three gun cannons, also for turn three. I absolutely love this card, just really strong, be able to uh, uh, basically give damage to one of our uh, your opponent's unique cards battling against this card. Uh, the damage is equal to the shooting points of this card, only costs you one cost. Now if you can pump this guy up, for example, with a critical blow, then you're looking at dealing 5 damage, which is just fantastic, of course. Uh, that goes without saying how powerful this card can be. Uh, it's a really, really good support uh, shooter in your deck. Now, this isn't the first iteration of this deck, and in this latest iteration I actually went to include two wide bases, Again, I just wanted to see more battleships, more supply. This is again a turn 3 card, but you can play it on top of a gun cannon or, or, or on top of a Jigun because it is a battleship. The supply 2 effect can be quite useful, and then if you get um, another card out which has a new type warrior attached, then this card cannot be affected by your opponent's card effects, which is just fantastic. Uh, the 3 lives. Not too bad, the one uh, shooting is okay, but it's more like what's, what's the uh, uh, special abilities and the effects of the card that makes this particular card shine. Uh, turn 4, we of course are running Gundams in this deck, and uh, I am currently running 3 of the, uh, the, the promo uh, Gundams. It's not a great card, it's mostly in here because uh, I I only have one copy of this Gundam, which is the main Gundam I would like to use. I would love to have three copies of this guy, I would certainly be running it. But this isn't bad either, it has sort of like uh, uh, an atmospheric entry on steroids, 
you can just basically pay two and move this card from the space down to the earth uh, and, and uh, then it's prevented from doing uh, unless it's prevented from doing so by any card effect. Uh, so you can just move this guy around every time you want, just bring him down from space to earth into your team if you have one team on earth, if not he will be your team on earth. Uh, it's not a bad card for sure, but this Gundam is better. Stats wise, the promo is a 213, this guy is a 313, which is immediately better. Also has atmospheric entry, so you can just dock down from space, go to Earth to uh, prevent any effects against him. And also, if he's got a new type warrior or character attached, can't be affected by your opponent's effects. And before you ask uh, why I'm only saying effects, it's because both Gundam and White Base seen an errata, and the errata says it's only called effects, so they still get regular battle damage. Uh, these are the Gundams I'm predominantly running. Again, I wish I had more of this Gundam. It's unreal to think that this is only an uncommon, and yet uh, I only ever managed to find one of these. If you do have one, please hit me up. Uh, I'm open to trade or buy it if if uh, if that's uh, if you can help me out like that. Uh, and then the final thing that we do is we also run a Zeta Gundam and we run a V2 Gundam. Now these are the, the powerhouses in the deck. These are the big beaters. I only got one copy each of these guys, but you probably don't really need a lot more than one copy. Now Zeta Gundam is fantastic. So much better than the set one uh, Regz or, uh, or even the set one Zeta because this guy just does it all. He can uh, transform into Wave Rider to get high mobility and atmospheric entry becomes a star 2-5, which is very good. He's also good on attack, a 4-2-4, which is good, but the Wave Rider on this one is even better. You can pay one to give one of your units that's basically, so if, if you have them like this, V2 and Zeta behind him, you can transform Zeta into the Wave Rider if you want to, uh, and then you can give this guy high mobility as well. Guys, high mobility is very strong in this game. Unless your opponent also has high mobility, they basically can't block your team, which consists of all high mobility cards. So there's a good chance that you will just be able to hit him immediately with a, a 6 if you want, uh, if you have this particular setup with no, with no blocks really. Uh, and that's fantastic. So that's what Zeta Gundam does, it's just really really flexible, not only does he give uh, the guy ahead of him uh, high mobility, he also get, gets them atmospheric entry as well, uh, and also the atmospheric entry on this card is for free, uh, it doesn't have a cost to it, unlike this one, it has an atmospheric entry cost of 1, this one does it for free, fantastic, plus the art, Jeez, look at that art, absolutely loving it. And then V2 Gundam is just uh, is just a Gundam on steroids. Again, a 424, which is very typical for these high uh, turn cost Gundams. However, he has a wide range weapon X, and X is half the cards. Uh, the, you, you you count the cards in your deck, and half of that is the no, or is it the full? Yeah, it is half of your nation pile rounded down. So if you got 30 cards in your deck, which is your nation pile. This guy has a wide range weapon of 15, <laughs> so it basically, it basically kills anything that's ahead of him, which is fantastic. Also has a special shield of 1, which can be sometimes important, but you're st certainly running this guy for the wide range weapon, which is just, just disgustingly good. Pilots, we have two Kats Kobayashi, mostly because I haven't got a third one, uh, just a very good early new type. Also has quick, so you can play during your opponent's turn as well. And when you play him at the end of the turn, you draw a card. Uh, and he also um, uh, puts the card into uh, reroll when he comes into play. So basically, if you put him on a, we can't call it tapped, but let's say put, put him on a tapped unit, they're gonna go and untap, which means you can attack or defend immediately, and you get that card draw as well. Kobayashi is just such a great card. I really wish I had a third copy. We got two Kyra Sus. Well, if we're running her Jigen, we might as well run the pilot as well. Another quick pilot, another fantastic pilot, but really good stats. A 1 1 2 addition to the, the suit she's on. 
and when she's defending she will also get a plus zero zero one so she will actually defend with plus three health rather than the plus two health she's attacking with fantastic card i love kyra su it's to me it's an alt include especially if we have her named suit in the deck uh, later situation in this deck, I am now running two Sailor Mass. I, uh, I, uh, this, this is a new addition again. I just wanted another sort of fairly. Uh, I wanted a, another useful new type, basically. And she's a zero one one, which is good. Comes down turn three earliest, which is also good. Well, unless you're running quick uh, generations, but also to be be able to tap herself and also tap one of your. Uh, one of your opponent's units is fantastic. If your opponent has like a massive card that you just can't deal with, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tap uh, Sailor. That basically means you also have to tap the unit Sailor's on, but it's not really a problem. If if you would be you know destroyed, just go ahead tap your Sailor. You tap your opponent's big beater, and and you you just want to turn for yourself to to come up with a solution how to deal with that particular problem. And then finally, we have one copy of the set one Amaro Ray. Uh, fantastic card again I only have the one copy not really a problem uh, just a fantastic new type um, you may have noticed it's a zero 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 uh, but you can for every two generation cards you tap he gets plus two plus two plus two you can also tap two of your generation cards to re-roll this card which means you, you let's say you put him on a v2 you go out and swing then your card would tap well Come your opponent's turn, if you still have two generations that you can tap, you, let's say you got uh, five down, there you go, you got all these fives, and then I say, okay, I'll tap two, untap this guy, and then let's say, you know, during the, because any timing, I can also tap two, get plus two, plus two, plus two onto this V2 gunner, which is so good, just so flexible, it also has prevent five, so it's a very, very, <coughs> very, very small chance it will ever be, ever be countered. Uh, so this is it for our pilots, then let's move on to our command cards. I'm running three a critical blow. Uh, it is a really, really big buff, but you can only you can only use it defensively during your opponent when your opponent's attacking you, you have to be um, you have to be defending with this card. But plus three plus three plus three is fantastic and as I said how good this card is with gun cannon uh, can come, come out of the blue making gun cannon a much stronger suit and also be able to shoot for five it's just such a good combo these two cards together is fantastic uh, one of the main reasons why obviously we're running our federation is because we want to play with Gundams and shocking white shadow gear uh, gives uh, one of our Gundams plus two plus two plus two and they cannot receive any damage by battle points until the end of the turn. So this is particularly good if you got um, this Gundam down uh, with, a, with a new type. Let's say you've got a Kobayashi on this Gundam. That's fantastic already because uh, he can't get any... Uh, he can't be affected. Uh, uh, doesn't suffer any damage by card effects because we got the new type. Now if we can Shocking White Shadow this Gundam, uh, we will go up to a uh, five. What is this? Five three six because of Kobayashi. Five three six cannot be uh, damaged by effects. Cannot be damaged by uh, battle points. You just basically get in it pretty much. Your opponent will have to jump or you know, take something. Maybe counter the shocking watch or something. Like that. So that's fantastic. Um, and uh, for support cards, uh, we have two Lando Bell, just you know your staple operation removal. I recommend running at least two operation removals in any deck, in any color that has, uh, of course, access to these. Uh, I think uh, brown and black doesn't have access to any uh, event removal, or maybe maybe brown and red. I'm not quite sure on that, but red has a lot of counter. So Londo Bell, uh, really good uh, operation removal, also with the Prevent 3, just absolutely fantastic. Uh, and we got two operations, the usual blue recovery, Order of Averting, uh, allows us, particularly late game, destroy one operation card, destroy one generation card, and move three cards from our discard pile uh, uh, on top of the nation pile. So just a bit of recovery. I could probably run more recovery, but... 
I will be reviewing this deck in the near future anyway. I just wanted to share this iteration. This is the most uh, complete iteration of this deck so far. So I wanted to share it as is with you guys and also keep a record for myself. And then finally, uh, what I found to be the sweet spot without any uh, turn one generation search is the 13 generations to run with. Um, you can certainly go ahead and experiment with quick generations. I probably will do that as well, maybe running the two. Um, or maybe going all out running three, but it has its own uh, sort of uh, risks involved with that quick generation because obviously you use it at the end of your turn, it can be a really good ramp, but it can also be then you know you're, you don't have any generation left in the game. However, quick generations do work really well with auto averting, so just on that basis, I would recommend running at least two. And uh, this is the deck profile for Earth Federation Blue. Uh, this is a mono blue deck. This had, uh, I, I did a uh, blue black uh, dual color iteration of this deck as well, built on the Titans Mark II Gundam, which also you can see up there, guys. I love that uh, Titans Mark II. It's a fantastic uh, unit, in my opinion. But the card in black, maybe not so good. Maybe I just need to crack the game a little bit more to get more value out of that card. Uh, but for the time being, this is it for this deck profile. Make sure you subscribe for more Gundam and more Dragon Ball card game content and whatever other wonderful shit I keep reviewing here. Um, also leave a like, uh, uh, share with other friends who also like Gundam. Uh, leave a comment below if you have questions about this game or if you have any of the cards I was talking about. Let's contact, let's make a deal. You can also join our community on Facebook. And up until next time, guys, Bustin signing out.